So last time we were talking about derivatives and applications of derivatives. Okay, so we're going to continue talking about that for just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so then I want to start out by doing an example. So for example, here's a function, and this is just a really simple one. So how about f of x is uh, x squared plus 6x plus 10. So incidentally, what kind of function is this? <coughs> this is a quadratic. It's a quadratic polynomial. And its graph is a what? A parabola. Right? This is a quadratic. Now, for reasons that you, you know, you've already seen a quadratic before, so you know that its graph is a parabola, and moreover, from pre-calculus or whatever, you should be able to tell me, does this particular parabola open up or down? It opens upward, right? It opens upward, and how can you see that by inspection? X squared, right? The, the second order term, right? The highest order term, X squared, has a positive coefficient, so it opens positively, right? It opens upward. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the purpose of this question is one, I want you to find all critical numbers, and two, I want you to find the intervals where the function is increasing, uh, where the function is decreasing, and where it's increasing. And three, I want you to find the location of all relative extrema. Okay, now there are two kinds of relative extrema. Please say them aloud. What are they? Relative mins and relative maxes. Okay. <clears throat> so let's find the critical numbers. So a critical number is where the what is what or what? The derivative is undefined or the derivative is zero. Okay, so then in any case we need the derivative, so the derivative of this function is 2x plus 6. And there should be basically no argument on this account by this stage in the semester. So then how about in the undefined category? Where is the derivative undefined? Right, none. There are no such places because it is a, pol it is a polynomial. Oops. It is a polynomial. And so polynomials are differentiable everywhere. <coughs> Good. Or it's defined everywhere. OK, so then how about where is the derivative equal to 0? So, well, we can solve this algebraic equation. right? 2x plus 6 is 0. And then after some algebraic manipulation, x is negative 3. So how many critical numbers were there in the undefined category? None. Right? And how many, how many critical numbers were there in the zero category? One. So altogether, how many critical numbers are there? One. Right? There is one critical number. Okay, now let's back up for just a minute. Why does it make sense that there is only one critical number? Because this is a parabola. Imagine in your mind's eye what a parabola looks like. It cannot possibly have any less or any more than one critical number. Furthermore, you know that the critical number that it has has to come from which category? The undefined category or the zero category? The zero category. Why? Because it's smooth, right? The function is smooth there. If it had a, if it had a critical number in the undefined category, what would be true? It would be non-smooth. It would be pointy. Can you think of a function that has a pointy critical number? Absolute value, right? Absolute value comes down to a point. It has a critical number, and that is where the derivative is undefined. Okay, so does everybody see how all of this agrees with all of your previous experience? Okay, good. <clears throat> so it has one critical number. So now, the instruction is to find the intervals. Okay, so then the way you do this is you plot the whole domain. Okay, 
So we'll plot the whole domain of the function. Incidentally, what is the domain of the function? All numbers. So on this plotting of the domain, you plot the, all of the critical numbers you found. So we found one critical number at x is negative 3. Okay, so then now we need to sample on either side of the critical number. So what is something to the left of negative 3? Negative 4. How about something to the right of negative 3? Negative 2. Okay, or 20 would be fine also, whatever you like. So then I want to test because what I'm trying to do is find where the function is increasing or decreasing. So I want to test its slope. So I'm going to plug into what? The derivative, because the derivative is the thing that is telling me about slope. So then if I evaluate the derivative at negative 4, then I obtain what? Negative 8 plus 6, which is negative 2, which in particular is negative. It's negative. It's negative. So that means that this function is sloping upward or downward? Downward. Okay. Sloping down, like so. Okay, similarly, at the other test point, I'll evaluate at negative 2. So then when you do that, you get negative 4 plus 6, which is 2, which is positive. So the function is sloping upward or downward? Yes? You, oh. so, so the answer to your question is, generally speaking, second derivative is there's nothing wrong with it, but we haven't talked about it yet. And what we are doing is we are constructing something called a slope chart. What is the second, we haven't said this yet, but what does the second derivative tell you about? Concavity. It doesn't tell you about slope. So the answer is that the second derivative will tell you nothing that you need to know in this case. <coughs> Okay, so then now, we use the slope chart, right, and the increasing lemma and the decreasing lemma. We know that the derivative is negative everywhere to the left of negative 3, and the derivative is positive everywhere to the right of negative 3, and therefore, with the increasing lemma or the decreasing lemma, you should be able to tell me where the function is increasing and where it's decreasing. So then, you could say f is decreasing on what? Negative infinity to negative 3. Okay, and similarly, f is increasing on what? Negative 3 to infinity. Okay, so any question about this? <clears throat> okay, then the last, the last question right was tell me about any relative extrema so then now so first off let's let's see that this corresponds with what we remember right this is a parabola right it has exactly one region in which it is decreasing it decreases because this parabola opens up it decreases to its vertex from the left and then from its vertex it increases right that's what parabolas do so can you see that this chart agrees with what you know? Okay, so then now three, you want to find the relative extrema. Now this, this is a parabola which opens up. So it has exactly what kind of relative extrema? A min. It has a min, and it has how many mins? Just one. So then look at the slope chart right here. Can you see that there is a min here? Yes, so then f has a relative min at x is negative 3. So then now, how do I know that that's actually a relative min and not some kind of way that I'm trying to trick you? The chart doesn't tell you everything. The chart gives you a good idea. The chart says that right here, this is a possible relative min. Right? If it's anything, it might be a relative min. Okay, but, but you need something else. You also need the function to be what there? Continuous. Right? It has to be continuous across that point. 
So then, is the function continuous? Yes, the function is continuous at that, rel at that place where the derivative changes sign from negative to positive. So it is, in fact, a relative min. So then, just as a, as a don't forget type moment, here I could give you this function, f of x. This is, so the question is complete now. But I'm writing this other thing right here to, to uh, what am I trying to say? Compare? Yeah, I guess as a comparison. So negative 1 over x squared. Right? So here's a, here's a function. Okay, its graph looks like this. Okay, so here's the axis. Its graph looks like this. <coughs> Okay, so then now, if you were to draw a slope chart in this region on the left side of the axis, is it increasing or is it decreasing? It's decreasing. And on the right side of the axis, is it increasing or is it decreasing? It's increasing. So now, ignore the graph and look at the slope chart. There could be a relative min there. Right? That's what the chart is telling you. There could be a relative min there. Is there a relative min there? No, there isn't. There's not even a point there. Right? It's not a relative min. <clears throat> okay? So any question about this example? Yes? There is one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so the question on the, this is on the online homework. It probably has an option to say, if there is none, then type in. <laughs> and that's the point, right? I'm sure I put that question in there because it sounds like something I would have done, right? The, the purpose of that question is exactly this comment that I've said right here. I, you are being trained to construct these slope charts, and I don't want you to think that this slope chart is telling you that there is certainly a relative min there. There might be a relative min there. Further consideration is necessary. Right Here, I gave you a slope chart. Yes, there is a relative min. Here is another slope chart that looks exactly like the previous one. There is not a relative min there. OK? No, there's none. <clears throat> this, this example that I've written right here, I don't know about your specific homework question, but this this graph right here has no relative minima and no relative maxima. <coughs> okay, good. So, good. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Is there anything else I want to address? Yeah, we'll do one more just to make sure that the point is clear and then we'll do something else. Mm, interval, blah, blah, for blah, 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 blah. Okay, that looks boring. So let's do this one. f of x is 2x is 2x plus 1 over x. Okay, and the per it's the same questions as before. I want you to find all of the critical numbers. I want you to find <coughs> I want you to find uh, all of the intervals where it's increasing, all of the intervals where it's decreasing, and all of the locations of relative extrema. Okay, now before you do anything else. Okay, the habit that you need to be in is you need to first find the domain of this function. So I didn't say anything about the domain of the last function because the last function was a what? A polynomial. Right? It was a polynomial and it has domain everywhere. So what is the domain of this function? Right? Anything except zero. Right? Anything except zero. Okay, so that now that we have that matter settled, now we can consider the critical numbers. But before I do that, I'm going to remember that while this 1 over x is a nice thing for algebra, it's actually not so useful for calculus, so I'm going to rewrite this as 2x plus what? x to the negative 1, because any time you're going to do calculus, it is far to your benefit to rewrite the function with negative exponents or fractional exponents rather than have radicals and divisions and things like that. Okay, so then that being the case, 
the derivative after simplification will be 2 minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so then that's the derivative. Now, critical numbers are where the derivative is what or what? Undefined or zero. You should always look, always look for the undefined category first. Now this, some of you are going to feel like this is a bit of a trick question. Is there anywhere the derivative is undefined? And the answer is no. Why not? Why not? So those of you that are saying there is a place where the derivative is undefined, where is that place? At zero, right? Those of you looking at the derivative saying, well, it looks to me like the derivative is undefined at zero. Well, I agree that it's undefined at zero, but not for the reason that you're saying. Why? It's not in the domain, right? X equal to zero is not a critical number. It's not a critical number because it's not in the domain. Right? That would be like that would be like some other some other example. Like, like I could say, what is the tallest mountain on Earth? And then someone would say, uh, Mons Olympus. And I would say, well, that's the tallest mountain in the solar system, but that mountain is on Mars. <laughs> right? So it's not on the Earth. So you're wrong. Right? So then x equal to 0 is not a critical number because it's not in the domain. Okay, none because of the domain. So Mons Olympus is the tallest mountain in the, in the, uh, in the solar system, but it's not on Earth. Okay, the tallest mountain on Earth, I think, is Everest. <coughs> so then the derivative equal to 0. So can we solve this equation? And the answer is... Probably. <coughs> so then let's do it. 2 minus 1 over x squared is 0. After rearrangement, you can get x squared is 2. No. x squared is a half. Okay, so then the absolute value of x is the square root of 1 half. So there are two solutions. x is negative the square root of a half and x is positive the square root of one half. Okay, so then altogether how many critical numbers did we find? Two critical numbers. Okay, good. Okay, so now the instruction is to find the intervals. <coughs> okay. So, now, you have to plot the domain Right, you have to plot the domain. So what is the domain of the function? Anything except zero. Right, so then I have to mark zero. It's important. And then in addition, in addition to zero, I found two critical numbers. So I have to mark them as well. So here is x is positive the square root of a half. And here is another one x is negative the square root of one half. Okay, so then the, the number line has been split into how many regions? Four, right? Four regions. Okay, I need to sample in each region. So then, something that's greater than the square root of a half? One. Something less than negative square root of half? Negative one. Okay, now here's something more interesting. How about something between uh, zero and the square root of a half? One half, right? One half. Okay, how about something in this other region? Negative one half. Okay, so sometimes it's a battle just to just to find points, right? Because if I don't give you nice fractions or integers, you got to sort of think about it for a minute. Okay, so then now. What we're doing here is we're constructing a slope chart. So at each one of those test points, I'm going to do what? I'm going to evaluate what? The derivative. And why am I going to evaluate the derivative? 
because I'm constructing a slope chart, right? I'm constructing a slope chart. And the derivative is what's telling me about slope. Okay, so then, f evaluated at the leftmost test point. Ah, excuse me, the derivative evaluated at the leftmost test point. Okay, so then the derivative evaluated at negative 1 will be 2 minus 1, which is 1, which is positive. Okay, so then what does that tell me about increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. So the function is increasing here. Okay, good. So now, at the next test point, the function evaluated at negative one-half. So at negative one-half, it is two minus, so then now negative one-half squared is positive one-fourth. One over one-fourth is four, so this is two minus four, which is negative two, which is negative. So a negative value. So is the function increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, because it has a negative slope in that region. Okay, good. So the next test point, f evaluated at positive one-half, well again, that is going to be what? Two minus four, which is negative two, so that is decreasing, is that right? Yes. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and evaluate the last one, and these are all at the derivative. Y'all gotta catch me when I make mistakes there. Okay, so then at one, so then this will be two minus one, which is one, which is positive. Okay, so then altogether the slope chart has this appearance, up, down, down, up. Okay, up, down, down, up. Wonderful, so then now, from the slope chart, you should be able to read off for me the open inter intervals where the function is increasing and where it's decreasing. So, decreasing. Ah, uh, I disagree. So then, f is decreasing, and I'm going to read the answer that was, that was said aloud. From negative the square root of a half to positive the square root of a half. So why is this wrong? Because zero is not in the domain. It's not decreasing at zero. It's not even defined at zero. Right? So then this is another typical question where I give you a slope chart that's down, down, or something like that, and you think that, oh, I should just include that point. Well, maybe not. Okay, so then it's negative the square root of half to zero union zero to the square root of a half. Okay, and then similarly, f is increasing on what? Negative infinity? Yes, to negative square root of a half. Yes, union. Yes, square root of a half to infinity. So how about this question? So any questions about this response? Okay, the next question was find the relative extrema. So then, have a look at the slope chart. Are there any candidates for a relative extrema? Are there any candidates? Okay, if there are, then where are they? It's where the slope changes. So the slope changes from positive to negative. So that's a possibility. How about here? Is, there a, is it possible for there to be a relative extrema here? No, because that's not a slope change. How about at the next place? Is that a possibility? Yes, so there are two possible places. Now tell me about the first one. X is negative the square root of a half. Is that a legitimate, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be a relative max. So it, it's going to be a relative max because the slope changes from positive to negative, if it's going to be anything, right? And you should be able to see that just sort of by squinting your eyes a little bit and thinking, ah, oh, that kind of looks like a mountain. So then, is it a relative max? Yes, it is a relative max. Why? Because the function is continuous there. Okay, the function is continuous there. So x equal to negative the square root of a half is a relative max. OK? 
Okay, and for a similar reason, x is positive the square root of half is a relative min. Okay, so then now that is the end of the question, but just to make sure that we have understanding, this graph, the graph of this function has this appearance. So the red is not part of the graph. Okay, the green is the graph. The graph looks like this, not that. So you can see at x equal to 0, that point is not in the domain. It's not in the domain. Now, how about right here where I'm generally indicating with my point? Is the function increasing or decreasing? Increasing. And then how about over here? Is the function increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, right? So increasing, then decreasing. So you should be able to see that right here or so is where it changes from increasing to decreasing. What x value was that? x is negative the square root of a half. Okay, similar argument says that about right here, that is where it changes from decreasing to increasing. x is the square root of one half. Okay, so do you see that just having a look at the graph agrees with all of the things we said? Okay, so any questions about this one? <clears throat> any questions? Okay, good. So then now, now, I wanted to spend this time doing this because all of these things that we were just talking about deal with the first derivative. And the first derivative is telling you about slope. And now, instead of calling it the derivative, I'm going to start referring it to it as the first derivative because this is going to be a segue to talking about the second derivative. Right? Now, both of these things, first derivative and second derivative, have geometric intuition. So I want to make sure that the geometric intuition is here. So now we are in section 3.4. Section 3.4. Okay, and it's going to be called what? Concavity and the second derivative test. Okay, so now, if I, if I draw a function, like so, not like that. <laughs> All the functions that I draw look like that. <laughs> Okay, so if I choose a point right here, then I can attach the tangent line. Right, the tangent line is the line that best agrees with the function at that point. So here, just sort of eyeballing it, oops, it looks like this, just at least according to my eye. Okay, that's the function, that, that's the line that matches the graph best. Now, lines are really important. One really great thing about lines is they're very easy to understand. Right? It's a line, after all. Humans have a good idea about this. So then, this thing that we talked about is constructing the tangent line. But there are other shapes that are interesting. Right? Squares are interesting. I like squares. Is there such a thing as a tangent square? And the answer is, oh yes. There is such a thing as a tangent square. Right? What about circles? Are there tangent circles? Oh yes, you will talk about tangent circles in calculus too when you're talking about curvature and normal vectors and, ta and tangent vectors and the differential geometry of space curves. Tangent circles is what you will be studying. Okay, so then tangent lines is what we've been studying up to here, but now what we're going to do is we're going to say that, okay, well, lines are great. I like lines, but I want to have something that is a polynomial and is just one step more complicated than a line. So what is a polynomial that is just one step more than complicated than a line? Parabola, right? So we're going to measure, we're going to have the standard parabola, uh, the, the tangent parabola. Okay, so then here, at this same point, I can attach a tangent parabola. 
Okay, and I would say just at least according to my eye, it looks maybe something like this. What is all that red? Do you see that? The machine just went crazy. Look at that. Okay, this this red is not, I can't even erase it. Okay, imagine, imagine it's not there. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Okay, imagine this, this red is not there. Maybe I can, I can color. Oh, look at that. But it's hard, I can't see my point. Because my point is white. Okay, sorry, the machine lost its mind. Okay, <clears throat> and now I can't see my point. Oh, where is he? Here it is. Okay, so the tangent, the tangent parabola looks something like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. This thing is just... Okay, so then that is the best fitting parabola. Okay, so then now, now that you understand the general idea, right, we can make tangent lines, we can make tangent parabolas, we can make tangent bananas, we can make tangent anything. Okay. <clears throat> Now, what is, what is important about a parabola? The thing that, in a sense, that's missing from uh, a line is it doesn't tell you how anything about bending, right? So we want to have this idea about, well, that curve, like the curve we're looking at, the blue curve, it bends. So if all we're talking about is tangent lines, then we sort of lose the notion of how is it bending, right? The tangent line is telling you how it's sloping. That's excellent to know. But it's not telling you how it's bending. So that's what, that's what the purpose of having a parabola is. So then now, what is the difference between constructing a tangent line and a tangent parabola? Luckily, the universe would have it like this. The first derivative tells you about the tangent line. And the second derivative tells you about the tangent parabola. Okay. So then the first derivative geometrically is telling you about slope. And the second derivative is telling you about the bendiness, the bendiness of, of the tangent parabola, how much it's bending, and the technical word for this is called concavity. Okay, good. So then, before I get right to it, I want to make a, a comment, quadrat, quadratic. So then, if I give you a function, right, the derivative, no, we'll do it like this. If I give you f of x is mx plus b, right? That's a line. Right? That's any line can be written as such. Mx plus b. What is the derivative? It's m. The derivative is m. So that's statement number one. Statement number two is that what if I instead of giving you a line, I give you a quadratic, a quadratic which is typically written as so ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, then what is the derivative? 2ax plus b, okay. So then now, now how about the second derivative, which means to say compute the, deriv the first derivative of the first derivative. So the first derivative is denoted f prime, so how is the second derivative denoted? f prime prime, right? Two tick marks. So what is the, what is the second derivative? 2a. Okay, so now this should, <laughs> this should be ringing some bells because you have a question on the take home quiz tomorrow and it looks just like this, doesn't it? It's not a coincidence. So then <clears throat> 2a. So tell me about this quadratic right here that I'm pointing at. Right, this one. Does it open up or down? This one I'm pointing to? Does it open up or down? You don't know. You don't know. I asked you about a parabola earlier in the lecture and you said it opened up and you said it with conviction. How did you know it opened up? Ah, you knew the leading coefficient was positive. So apparently the opening upness or downness of a parabola depends on the leading coefficient. So then, does it open up or down? And the answer is, it depends on what a is, doesn't it? Okay, so then now, a, a is telling you the bendiness of a parabola. 
If A is positive, then it is bending upward. If A is negative, then it is bending downward. So that A, A is what's telling you about the bendiness of a parabola. So now we're going to export this bendiness, the leading coefficient of the quadratic term, to anything, any other function. Okay, good. So then now, <coughs> because I spent all this time on these other things, <laughs> we're going to have to go through this part quickly. Okay, so this is called concavity. So then I'm going to draw a quick graph. <coughs> okay, I got to think about it for just a minute here. Okay. So I'm going to make a an asymptote right here. This thing is not part of the graph, it's an asymptote. Okay, so then now I'm going to draw the graph in blue. <coughs> like so. Okay. So now, what we're trying to do is, I want to figure out some things about the concavity of this graph. So just like looking at the graphs and trying to tell me slope up, slope down, we're going to try and figure out intuitively sort of what is, it, what is concave up and concave down going to be, right? So up is going to be like, be like an upward opening parabola and down is going to be like a downward opening parabola. So then, let's start out with an easy place. So how about here in this region where I'm indicating? Would you say that in this region, it is concave up or concave down? Up, right? It looks like an upward opening parabola here. Okay, so here it's concave up. How about over here? What would you say? Concave down, right? Concave down. It is most similar to a, conca to a downward opening parabola. It is not very similar to an upward opening parabola. Okay, now how about right here? Down. Ah, but you said it was up here. Ah, so apparently, but apparently between these two places, right, where you say it's down and over here you say it's up, it must have changed somewhere. Have a look at the graph and see if you can see, just, just with your eyes, where do you think it changes from concave up to concave down? Okay, lots of pointing, so <laughs> right there. So, you know, I'm just going to just say maybe, maybe about right there and about right there. Okay, so then now, this right here, so then, you know, part of teaching is coming up with silly things to say. So then now, this is going to be concave up like a cup, right? You could... <laughs> you could you could pour water in here, right? And it would stay. And this is concave down like a, like a frown. Right? You'll, see, you'll see that for the rest of your life. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, and then right here, like a, like a smile. Look at that. How about this one? Concave down like a frown. Okay, wonderful. So then, concave up and concave down. So does everyone get the general geometric idea? Okay, so then now, we have the concave up and concave down lemmas. So these are called the concavity lemmas. Concavity lemmas. So these are by direct analogy to the increasing, decreasing lemmas, the slope lemmas. So the slope lemma says that if you have a function which is differentiable on A to B and it has a positive derivative on A to B, then the function is increasing on A to B. That's what it's doing. Okay, now similarly, if f of x is twice differentiable 
on A to B. That is to say that the second derivative is defined. <coughs> at every point on A to B. Okay. And the second derivative is positive on A to B, then you can tell me it's concavity. Which one? Oh yeah, I did. Isn't that disturbing? Let's put it. <laughs> okay, so then, so if you have a function which has a second derivative, right? You can compute its second derivative at every point in an interval, and the second derivative is positive everywhere on that interval. Then it has positive concavity, and so that's positive people, they're smiling or frowning? Smiling, right? So it's concave up. Okay, then f of x is concave up on A to B. Okay, similarly, if the second derivative is defined in negative on A to B, then what? Negative people, smiling or frowning? Frowning, right? So then F is concave down on A to B. Okay, so any question about <coughs> these things here, these lemmas? Okay, so then now, in algebra, in algebra, it was a common question for the instructor to say, I want you to construct a sign chart of this function, which is to say, I want you to find where it's positive and where it's negative. That was a very common question in algebra and maybe pre-calculus too, depending on how that went. Now, we just got finished doing that, except it wasn't, I want you to construct a sign chart, it was, I want you to construct a slope chart, which means that you don't take the, deri you don't take the function and find where it's positive and negative, you take the derivative and you find where it's positive and negative to make a slope chart, because slope is given to you by the derivative. Now, in this section, we're not constructing a slope chart, we're constructing a concavity chart. And so what are you going to do? You're going to compute the second derivative, find all of the places where the second derivative is undefined or zero, plot the domain and all of those points that you found, sample, and then where you sample a positive value, the function is concave, up and where you sample a negative value, the function is concave down. Instead of an upward sloping arrow and a downward sloping arrow for positive and negative, you make another symbol, which we will do right now, and I will demonstrate for you in an example. <coughs> okay, so then, typical example would be something like, mm, this one looks wonderful. By wonderful, I mean boring <laughs> and easy enough to do in the time remaining. So then, <clears throat> how about x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x? So incidentally, what kind of function is this? It's a cubic. Right? It's a cubic, and its graph is called a cubic also. Right? So this is a third order polynomial. It's a cubic. So then now... It has a positive leading coefficient. So that tells you that its behavior to the right is that it has to be positive. So it's either, you know, it's either one of these cubics or one of those cubics, right? Which one is it? And the answer is it's the one that goes up to the right. So this cubic has this appearance. That's what it looks like. So you should know that. It's very helpful to know that because have a look at this graph. Can you see anywhere it's concave down? Yeah. Can you see anywhere that it's concave up? Yeah, so you should be expecting these things. Right? You know the way this question has to go. It has to be that it is concave down somewhere on the left and it is concave up somewhere on the right. It has to be that way. So then, let's do it. Okay, so then let's compute the derivatives. So then, the first derivative 
is 3x squared minus 6x plus 12. But we're constructing a concavity chart, so is that not it? Ah, 12x, better. <laughs> Okay, 12x plus 12, good. The second derivative, now the first derivative is not actually very useful on this question because we're making a slope chart. We're not making a, I mean, we're making a concavity chart. So the first derivative isn't telling us things about concavity. So the second derivative is 6x minus 12. Okay, so then now, the domain and, you know, these aren't, the places where the second derivative is zero and undefined aren't called critical numbers. So I'll just call them interesting numbers. <laughs> right. The book, unfortunately, continues with the tradition of not, not giving them a very good name. So then for the first derivative, they're called critical numbers. For the second derivative, they have no particular name. So I'm going to call them just interesting numbers. OK, so is there anywhere the second derivative is undefined? None. Is there anywhere the second derivative is zero? Probably, right? Okay, so then we can solve this equation. 6x minus 12 is zero. After algebraic re re rearrangement and solving, you get x is 2. Okay, so then now we need to plot this function, plot the domain of this function. Okay, so what is the domain of the function? All numbers. Right, it's all numbers because, uh, because it was a polynomial. So then now the only place of interest is at x is 2. So now we need to sample to the left and right of 2. So how about 1 and 3? So now I need to plug these into something, plug them into the second derivative because we're constructing a concavity chart. Right, so if you evaluate the second derivative at 1, then you obtain what? Negative 6, which is negative. So that's concave down like a brown, right? Wonderful. So like this. Okay, and then the second derivative evaluated at the other test point will be what? 3, blah, 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 positive 6, which is positive. So that's concave up like a cup. OK, so then you can tell me now. F is concave up on what interval? So 2 to infinity, right? I said concave up first. So concave, I don't know why I said up first, but whatever. So f is concave down on what interval? Negative infinity to 2. Now, does this answer agree with what you already knew about this function? Yes, have a look at the function. We knew the function had to look like that. We knew it had to look like that. Where did it change? It changed at x is 2. That's where the change happened. From down to up. Okay, see you on Wednesday. <coughs>